Okay guys, so it looks like we got a big firmware release for our Legends Ultimate Arcade Cabinet and quite a few things have changed. I'm gonna go through this step by step. We're gonna go through all the different updates and changes and we're also gonna take a look at some of the really big features that are starting to come our way. Now I do wanna mention that there are going to be a few different uh, firmware releases that we're gonna see kind of in succession. We've got one today. There is another one planned for later on in the week. We're probably gonna get some more next week. So there's there's going to be a ton of stuff coming out of the woodwork from at games in a very short period of time i'm going to do the best that i can to cover as much of it as i can obviously anything major i will definitely put out videos for uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to take things one step at a time so as you guys have probably seen we now have firmware version 4.5 which was released today what you need to do is hop over to your settings section, select the firmware version. It will prompt you that there is an update. Go ahead and download it. Once it's downloaded, you'll have to hit the A button to confirm you want to install it and it will run the process automatically. Once that's all said and done, you will be running the latest version. So some of the highlights that we're going to see for this build is that there is a new process to upload scores to the leaderboard. And specifically what they've done is they've enabled the leaderboard to be used with uh, three games to start off with. We've got Burger Time, we've got Fix It Felix, and we have Tetris. The process is quite easy. You have to be mid-game with your high score visible on screen. You're going to press the menu button on your control deck and you're going to select Save High Score. Now this is important to note, if you choose to do this and submit a high score this way, it will force you to restart the game. You cannot continue playing at that score level. It will submit it and say, hey, that's your high score. You got to start over from the beginning. So if you don't want to do that, or you think you can get an even higher score, I would recommend not doing that until you're 100% sure you want to submit that score. That being said, if you don't do it at the right time or it can't detect your score, you are going to get an error on screen and then you can of course just resume the game and try again. Another smaller change that's been made is with ArcadeNet. So if you actually go over to ArcadeNet and you select just a random game, you're now given the ability to change the display mode right within the options. So you'll load up ArcadeNet, you'll hit your menu button, and along the top you're gonna have access to all of your different settings and the ability to exit out of it, but you're now going to have a feature called display mode. So you can now change it to pixel perfect, you can change it to full, you can change it to fit, whatever you prefer, Whatever kind of aspect ratio you want to see for that game can now be selected. So it's not a huge update, but we do have a little bit more customizability when it comes to our arcade net games. Now, before I get to the big update, there's gonna be a few other things. We've got improved Wi-Fi. There's gonna be improved firmware update process and UI. We're gonna have minor UI improvements general performance and stability improvements, things like that. Uh, another thing that we're gonna talk about before we jump into the big change or the big feature is that there are some known issues related to the background music. And what you may find is that the background music may continue to play in specific scenarios. So if you're going into something like attract mode, you may end up having your background music playing over top of whatever attract mode video you have, and you may have two different audio files playing at the same time. So that's not ideal. Uh, additionally, if you go into the BYOG section, arcade net, local streaming, any of those sort of things, the background music may not cut out. So the simple solution to that is you just turn off your background music in your settings. Obviously, because they are aware of the problem, they are working on a solution to it. This just sounds like a little bit of script work that needs to be done in order to kill the audio when you're launching certain applications. Now we're gonna move into the very big feature. So what's happened here is if you go over to the BYOG section, you would have a Steam app, you would have your Origins app, you would have your Blizzard app, your Epic Games app, all of those sort of things would all be visible there. They've actually consolidated everything into one single application. Now it should just be labeled Cloud BYOG. Now when you click on it, it may prompt you that it needs to set up the server. It could take up to five minutes. Now the nice thing is that they allow that to happen in the background, so you can go ahead and do that. And then when it's done, you can come back to it and just click on it and launch it. And this essentially is going to be almost like a beta or the precursor to the MGR feature, which if you're not familiar with it, is the My Game Room. It's essentially a computer away from your home. It's like a, a server-based computer that you can 
install games on, you can play. Uh, it's a very, very powerful device. So I've got mine launched up right now. As you guys can see, I'm gonna go take a look at the specs. We have a huge amount of RAM. We've got a very powerful processor and even the GPU uh, is very, very powerful. Now it is important to note that it is going to depend on which server you're connected to. Your hardware may rotate based off of that. Um, but generally speaking, we're gonna have very, very powerful hardware associated with these servers so that way you can pretty much play any game you want. So that is a huge, huge, huge benefit and that's a lot of fun. Now, the big thing here is that this feature is going to be reliant on the paid service. So currently you're paying a dollar per hour or if you buy in bulk, uh, you can get slightly better rates, but keep that in mind because this is going to be a paid service here. Additionally, each individual is gonna have between 200 or 250 gigabytes worth of cloud storage. And I would imagine that what At Games is going to do is uh, this could be another potential route for revenue for them where they can charge the end user uh, additional monthly subscription amounts for additional storage. So if you want an additional 500 gigs worth of storage, they may charge, you know, five or 10 bucks a month for that. Uh, or whatever the going rate is. So as cool as this feature is, it's a huge benefit to at games because they can start to funnel in additional revenue uh, right from this feature here. So that's really good in terms of what's being built. I like that they've really thought this out. They didn't just give you a crummy server where you've got terrible latency and horrible FPS running games and it's just not really user friendly. This is essentially a really solid PC with great networking, great servers. So so we're gonna have a pretty good experience here. I may do another video that's dedicated to the Cloud BYOG feature where I can show you guys a few things. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I don't think we have the ability to link cabinets yet. That may be coming down the road at some point, um, but this is a really good starting point to really get people comfortable with where they are at. Now it's important to note if you're one of those people that were using the standalone um, for example, Steam apps, you're going to need to re-download all your content. And because of that, At Games is going to compensate you for that. So if you're a user who's used five or more hours worth of streaming time, they're going to comp you five hours, which probably has already happened. And obviously, depending on your usage, they comp you accordingly. But as far as I can see, the highest level of compensation would be five hours. And then if you're somebody who doesn't use it very much, you're going to get less than that. So yeah, it's a little bit annoying to have to re-download all your content that way. And to be clear, this has nothing to do with the add-on games on your USB drive. This is specific for your cloud storage games. So you don't have to worry about that too much. But that's all I've got for you guys. Please subscribe to the channel and hit that thumbs up. Thank you again for watching and I will talk to you guys again real soon.